All right, folks, so we are starting in the blue guided practice packet. Number seven is a complex fraction. Start by floating that negative up with the top. And now we can see that this is the top part of our complex fraction. This is the bottom of our complex fraction. So what we want to do is find a common denominator for the top so that we can add those two together. What would be the best common denominator to use? We've got x plus 4. We've got x minus 2. So I'm going to have to include both of them as part of my LCD. So that's what I'm going to use for my least common denominator of the top. What am I going to use for the least common denominator of the bottom? Same thing. The same thing. So that's cool because that means we should have some nice simplification at the end of all of this. So let's go ahead and use our creative forms of 1 so that we can add these fractions together. This has the x plus 4. It's missing the x minus 2. So x minus 2 over x minus 2 as our creative form of 1. For the fraction to the right, we will have x plus 4 over x plus 4. And then let's go ahead and do the bottom as well. This one is missing x plus 4 over x plus 4. And then this one, x minus 2 over x minus 2. So I want you to get as far as you can with the distribution on this one. Actually, we'll do the top one together, and then you can take it from there. So 3 to the x, 3 to the negative 2, 3x minus 6, and then we will have negative 4 times x, negative 4 times 4, negative 4x minus 16. And that is all going to be over the LCD. So x minus 2 and x plus 4. So I took care of my distributing and putting it over one fraction in one step. So if it helps, we did the distribution and then added those tops together. So that's how I got that green line on the top of that fraction. So that is the top fraction. Yeah? Why does this change? Like x minus 2 and x plus 4? Yeah, like look at the bottom. It's like on, on the original problem, it's x plus 4. That's Why does the LCD change? So when I slid these together, the order doesn't matter. So x minus 2, x plus 4, you could just as easily have x plus 4, x minus 2. Order doesn't matter. 2 times 4 is the same as 4 times 2, so it doesn't matter the order that you put them in. So go ahead and try distributing on the bottom while also adding those tops together. So, 8x plus 32, 2x minus 4, and this is all over x plus 4x minus 2, or the other way around. Combining our like terms together, 3x and negative 4x is negative x. Negative 22 when we add our negative 6 to the negative 16. And that is all over that common denominator. Now, can we factor anything on the top? 
I mean, we could take out a negative one, but that's not going to do anything canceling out wise for us. So I'm just going to go ahead and trap that in parentheses. And then because I'm running out of room, I'm going to combine my like terms and reciprocalize that bottom fraction. So combining my like terms, we'll get 10x. It's going to go to the bottom. 32 minus 4 is 28. And then on the top, we have that LCD. Now, the 10x plus 28, we can actually take a GCF out. So let's take a 2 out, and that will leave us with 5x plus 14. So is there anything we can cross-simplify at this point? x minus 2 and x minus 2, x plus 4 and x plus 4. Final answer is negative x minus 22, all over 2 times 5x plus 14, leaving it in that factored form. If you wanted to factor out a negative one, you could, but since it's not going to lead to any simplifying and it's not like a necessary GCF, you can go ahead and leave it as such. All right, folks, so looking over any questions on this blue packet, are there any problems? Yeah. The GCF part? Oh, if you just said, hey, I know those are going to cancel. Yeah. You don't have to. So if you know they're going to cancel. All right, folks, so at this time, clear stuff off of your desk, and we're ready to take the homework quiz.